A very good uh, afternoon to all of you all, and it's a pleasure to add this, uh, this distinguished gathering. I would like to thank the organizers first for uh, inviting me, uh, uh, Mr. Oberoi, for uh, uh, extending the invitation, and uh, all of you are here today. It's a great honor for me to be here, and especially the first panel, uh, which inspired a lot of thought into uh, not just ranking, but also accreditation. Uh, I would like to make one comment, and I think I remember one event I recently went to in Egypt, where the head of the National Accreditation uh, Council said uh, on stage that uh, rankings are fast food and accreditation is uh, healthy food. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we had a debate on that topic, and I said, well, uh, rankings uh, is probably fast food. Is maybe you, you consider that uh, accreditation is healthy food, but I think. Uh, it is uh, rankings is also healthy food, but it adds, it has a spicy healthy food which adds a spice to it. Uh, so I think uh, it, it, both are different. Um, where, whereas accreditation sets minimum standards, I believe uh, it does tell you what's the minimum standard to maintain. But uh, rankings allows you to reach for the skies, allows you to reach much higher, aim much higher, and aspire to do much better. So uh, this presentation today, I've put a few slides together, and I hope I'm able to as well inspire you to do something differently uh, in the Indian higher education space. So uh, first, our mission at QS, um, I'm always um, you know, made to do this because otherwise we wouldn't get funding for travel. So our mission is to enable motivate people around the world to fulfill their potential of fostering international mobility, educational achievement, and career development. Uh, QS actually started off from an MBA school, if you're might be interested in to, to know about that. We came out of the Wharton School uh, in 1990 where the founder, Nunzio Quacarelli, uh, was still studying. Uh, QS was actually a master's thesis, which he did. He came out with a book called the Top MBA Career Guide. And there on the journey of QS started, we went on, uh, he went on to London and met with Matt Simmons. And that's how you have QS, uh, is the name of the two founders. And um, in 2000 and, uh, uh, 2020, the current year, we have over 500 staff members from one person in 1990. Today, we are a global hired company, presence around the world with uh, uh, you know a very strong presence in India. Uh, our rankings, which we have, um, we have the World University ranking, which all of you are probably aware in some form or shape or the other. People have heard of QS University rankings. Uh, we do the best student cities. We do uh, ranking by subject. But I think what we're going to cover today uh, slightly, and not the methodology per se, would be the, uh, our um, business school rankings and the MBA <coughs> rankings. Uh, besides all the rankings, we also have our QS stars rating system and our very own rating system for India, called the QS IVH rating system. Our QS rankings are approved by IREC, which is the International Rankings Expert Group, and we're the only global ranking to have that seal of approval. Now, why is it important? Because in a marketplace like India or Asia, we have several rankings. Having an approval like IREC, you should be asking your ranker, do you have IREC approval? Because this is the seal of approval that makes sure that rankings are compiled professionally and with a transparent methodology. Uh, so rankings are referred by various agencies in, the, in India, and I don't need to uh, tell you how MHRD uses its rankings, or uh, we have UGC uses rankings, the latest IOE exercise uh, has gazetted uh, QS as one of the me means for them to judge uh, the latest uh, institutions being added. So various organizations in the world are using rankings for various purposes. Uh, what we are very proud of is that our online um, uh, reach, 75 million plus visitors, uh, you know, our rankings uh, measure about 1,000 universities from about 2,500 which apply. Um, you know, our world MBA tour we do has about 100,000 prospects which visit a tour across uh, 200 cities every year. Uh, so from there on, I would like to put a disclaimer here. The disclaimer is that rankings are a directional guidepost uh, for global candidates and uh, only are a starting point for exploration. Uh, they are only as good as the input uh, which can be and the methodology and none are perfect and uh, therefore no static result set will ever be perfect. And um, I, I shared this quote from, um, uh, from George Box, which says, all models are wrong, 
but some are useful. And that's exactly what I would like to hear to uh, tell you that I'm not here to tell you that QS is the best ranking or if there's the best ranking system in the world today because all the ranking models are evolving and, um, and some of the imperfect rankings in the world today are actually all of them including QS because we are listening to people, we're listening to you, we're listening to what, what people want, what students want, and incorporating that in our rankings. So what's the Indian representation? Now here I'm going to go into the B-School space. Uh, you've probably seen the MBA uh, ranking from QS, the Financial Times ranking, the Economist, uh, and the Bloomberg, and the CNN Expansion ranking. And we have a very small representation of Indian business schools which are there in this space. Now, when we look at the title of the session, which says ranking denotes quality or USP, unfortunately, we are, we are having neither of them in terms of masses coming out of India. So when you look at the financial times, there's four in the top 50. When you look at economists, there's one in the top 100. When you look at QS, we have five in the top 100. So uh, there's a long way to go. This accredited Indian institutions as well. Let's look at these numbers. These numbers are updated as of yesterday because I think we've got a few more institutions. Uh, ASCSB has got a few more institutions accredited. So 14 uh, from ASCSB, 11 from uh, AMBA, and five from uh, Equus uh, EFMD. So there is a huge amount of gap, even though people believe that rankings covers all types of institutions, it's perception based. Uh, we can see that Indian institutions, especially in the, in the business school space, are not doing enough and are not being represented enough. So what pushes schools into rankings? One is the growth of uh, the international student pipeline, and uh, uh, that's really becoming more and more important as the market matures. India, uh, especially some schools in India like the ISV, have been able to attract international students, and perhaps the B school space is one of the area where we have a better chance of being uh, of being a real an international marketplace for um, masters and MBAs. It diversifies revenue because what happens is you can charge differentiated pricing, right? Uh, better the school, better the ranking, better the accreditation, more of the fees. Uh, it helps strengthen reputation amongst candidates, academia, employees, and several other people. Everybody now wants to be ranked uh, or wants to be rated and wants to have a better ranking. And let me share with you an anecdote. A few weeks ago, I was at a, at a party, uh, months ago, I was at a party and um, I met an, uh, an academic who's, a, who's already completed his stint in India and was looking to go abroad. So he's questioned to me, where are you from? I said, from QS. Oh, well, you rankers are always, you know, producing rankings, disturbing the marketplace, and, you know, you have a huge amount of reputation in this, and it's, rankings are not good. So then I said, oh, well, okay, I mean, you have your opinion and I respect it. And then my question to him was, uh, now you've completed a stint in India, where do you want to go? He said, I'm looking at Paris for my, uh, for a stint in Paris. I would like to do a sabbatical there. So I said, how are you going to choose the university or the college there? He said, well, I'm looking at asking for opinion. I'm looking at people's, uh, what people are thinking about it. I'm looking at reputation. And I said, well, that is all what QS captures is reputation, not from a single person but from a huge number, a cohort of academicians globally. So uh, definitely this is, this is exactly what pushes uh, schools into rankings, and I hear business schools particularly. Uh, next please. So there are three things I'm going to cover in this, and I would like your participation if in case you would like to ask me a question later on. So is the game going to end? And this game is as in participating in rankings, pushing for quality, because there is definitely a fact that QS ranking or any other ranking, while not being uh, perfect, pushes institutions to do better. It is a quality indicator. We've seen from the, in, from the number of Indian institutions in board rankings and in accreditation, there's a huge scope. So is this going to end? Are, are people going to stop looking at them in the future? So we can look at, um, at some of the numbers. So business school drivers. Definitely, rankers are continuing to going to make rankings. Uh, schools are creating administrative units now to respond to rankings and to accreditation. There are offices for benchmarking, ranking, accreditation being set up within the cohort of uh, the institution. And schools are going to aggressively market how well they do, as long as they do well. And they're definitely <coughs> rankers are going to continue to make rankings because there's interest. So the loop is going to continue, and I believe in the business school space, in the MBA space, we are going to do much better. Um, better data is going to come across. Our reputation is going to grow. So definitely, this game is not going to end anytime soon. 
or an excess. Prospective student drivers, and this is another reason why this will continue to uh, to increase the QS MBA applicant survey, which you use in our QS uh, MBA rankings, says that of the top, the third um, uh, most um, uh, important reason why uh, what students look at are rankings of institutions. First is general online search, official school sites, and then they look at rankings of institutions. When we look at the usefulness of rankings, we ask them how do they, uh, how do the students use them. The number six item on the list besides discussion with admission staff or the school site or any other source, they are looking at rankings at the same time. And that uh, importance has been increasing over the last few years. So alumni, and we, we did the survey again in the QS MPA alumni survey uh, the year before last, uh, we asked three times. So we asked what are the most important factors for them. Now, when we looked at uh, possibly in India, okay, this does happen a lot, but here, especially in the West, you would see what the dean is. Uh, and uh, you know, if the dean is good, has moved around, has really well reputed. Uh, you would go for that. But in this survey, we found out that well, not a lot of people. Fifty percent of them thought <coughs> it's somewhat important. Curriculum uh, is really important, uh, what was found out. The community engagement, well, good. But let's look at the ranking position. This was the high, uh, one of the highest at 90%. Um, and uh, you know, that's really what, what stood out of, of this as well. Um, and followed by uh, the strong alumni network and reputation among employers, uh, reputation among academics as well, and then several other things. So, Rankings are part of this. While we look at accreditation, while we look at everything else, students are looking at rankings because this is easily available source on the internet today, uh, especially from QS or any other top uh, top other uh, ranking providers. So the ranking drivers in the 21st century: schools are operationalizing definitely, candidates are using it, uh, public is watching, uh, alumni cares about it, uh, especially in our alumni survey. Uh, we found that out uh, more data is available than ever before. Um, there is definitely demand for social media content and the human nature to do better and better. So definitely, um, I can say that it's very unlikely that rankings are going to become less dependent in the future and they can 